Hello, everybody, and welcome to week number six of the 50-Day Property Challenge, brought to you by EDPF Property Academy and Private Property. Today, we are wrapping up week number six, and because last week we spoke at length with Jared, and we heard all about his endeavors and the fact that he has now bought his first property, we've decided that today we are going to focus on Matt Al. So this week, we are going to just have a look at how she started out, and then we will talk to her about her journey thus far. Good day, everybody. I am Nigel Adrianza, the CEO and founder of the Enterprise Development Property Fund, as well as the EDPF Property Academy. Today, we are here with Matt L. Most of you will know her from the 4 a.m. show on Metro FM. Today, we start our 50-day challenge with her and many other celebrities that you will get to know over a period of 50 days, hence the 50-day challenge. What is the 50-day challenge about? The 50-day challenge is where we, as the Enterprise Development Property Fund, challenge our celebrities to, within 50 days, purchase their first property. How are they going to do that? We are going to give them all the tools that they require, from legal support, to financial support, to architectural and other support that they require in order to build their property portfolio. Today, they start their journey with us. And on this journey, which in total will take them three years, they will build their property portfolio. But within the 50 days, they are challenged to buy at least one property. So Matt, Al, let's get started. Tell us why it is that you want to invest in property. Thank you so much, Nigel, for such a kind introduction. So one thing I certainly believe is that school teaches us a lot on how to save but we're not necessarily taught and equipped with the skills on how to grow capital and how to necessarily build, what is it called? Generational wealth, right? That's the word I was looking for. And for a person like me, who's a radio presenter, who's a DJ, do a lot of things, MC, TV, there's a lot of cash flow that comes in, but that money can go as fast as it comes in. And hence, it's quite important to invest it in something that you know is long term. Um, the property space, I t definitely believe, is, is a space where if done correctly, because you could invest wrongly, but if done correctly, you could potentially have your money locked in a space where you know it will grow over a long term. Mm, fantastic. So tell us, have you already bought a property? Are you already invested in a property? So fortunately, yes, I am. I do have two properties that I had acquired whilst I was in the corporate space. Not sure yet if it was the best move because I was doing it with quite limited knowledge. However, when we went through a space of lockdown, I was quite grateful that I did that because when there were no gigs, no events, that rental income that I was receiving is what actually kept me afloat. So I'm quite passionate about creatives and artists actually exploring other avenues of where to keep their money invested. That is amazing. And I mean, as we, as we know, or some of us know anyway, within the creative space, mm -hmm. people think, yes, you're famous, so you obviously have a lot of money. Tell us what that experience has been like for you. Ooh. And, and you know, when people look at you and go, you must have a lot of money. <laughs> To be honest, um, it's not all gold that glitters. I think it takes um, long-term planning as well in order for you as a creative to actually make a lot of money. Mm. But in the beginning, it's really not that much. Mm. It's, um, it's one gig here and there. Sometimes that gig, you're just breaking even. It's just enough money to get you to the gig and back, just enough money to pay your team. So not so much in the beginning, but of course, if you're passionate and you consistent with whatever you're doing, eventually your brand will build a presence and you'll attract other brands into your space. And then over a long term period, you will start to make good money. OK, so I'm going to ask you a question that we did not tell you or beforehand what oh, we, we're going to ask you. <laughs> um, and, and really, that's because you've now told me you've already purchased two properties. So 
because you've already purchased two properties and the EDPF Academy is more about helping people who know nothing about property to get into the space. Why have you chosen the EDPF Academy then to be part of this program? The reason I say that is because I still believe that there isn't a lot of academies that focus specifically on developing people's property knowledge. Mm. Um, when I was doing that, I was doing it blindly. Yeah. It was something I was trying out. And hence, I specifically said, investing in property is a good idea if done correctly. Mm. There's a lot of people who find themselves buying property and then they're stuck. Yeah. And it becomes a loss and more of a liability, whereas property is an asset yes. if done correctly. So one thing I know for sure, especially with the EDPF, is the fact that you impart knowledge on mm -hmm. people. You partner people with stakeholders who also in, impart knowledge on them like accountants like you know lawyers all those things that you obviously need to acquire property because even in the property journey you're not alone yeah when you get to the bank how do you ask for credit what do i need to have good credit those things were not taught mm. and i know that through the academy i'll mm. definitely polish those fantastic i'm so glad that you brought that up because um within the academy we give you all the tools that you require whether it be like you say lawyers and accountants architects, quantity surveyors, mm -hmm. town planners, engineers, yeah. as well as support in terms of how to raise capital. Mm -hmm. So one of the big things that normally is a problem in terms of trying to build a property portfolio for most people in South Africa, or even in the world, is how do I raise capital and where do I find the money? Sure. So let me ask you this question then. When you bought your first two properties, how did you go about raising the capital to purchase those two properties, mm -hmm. knowing that in South Africa, most people can't even buy one, one. property? So first of all, it starts with obviously having a good credit score. Yeah. And with that good credit score, I was then able to approach a number of banks. That was the route I had. I did not have cash on hand to be able to do this. So I had to acquire some form of credit mm -hmm. to, in order to be able to buy the property. But this is what makes it more interesting for artists and creatives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have that pay slip that you can bring to Correct. the bank so yes. how then do you mm. raise the capital so i think it's going to be quite interesting mm. now that i've transitioned out of a corporate space with a lot of stability yeah. and a lot of um knowing for sure for the next six months i have a salary whereas in the creative space three months you're great two months you're not yeah. another five months you're great so it's just also how do you still then secure mm. that capital with yeah. such a volatile industry we, yeah, which is fantastic <laughs> i mean that is one of the things that we in the property industry love talking about using other people's money and that is one of the things yes. that we're going to be teaching you <laughs> over this this 50-day journey so just to reiterate the 50-day journey we're going to help matt l to build a property portfolio more than the two she just uh, she already has acquired um and using all the tools at her disposal as well as all the tools that we as edbf will help her so your first step into this new environment what is the value of property that you're looking to invest in to start with i think uh looking at uh the property market especially in terms of coming out of a lockdown and all these things i'm not looking to go anywhere near a million no mm. um to be quite honest my ballpark is between 450 and 650. okay but i'm more centered towards the 450. Um, the only reason I'm saying 450 to 650 is that if the value of the property is 450, then I'm just adding on those extra costs that I'd still mm, need for mm. the transfers and, and, and if yeah. any renovation potentially is needed, just factoring that as well. But the property price I'm really pinning for is 450. Fantastic. Listen, we've, we, we're embarking on this journey, but you've already learned quite a bit because of your experience. So um, that'll help you a great deal to reach your goal much quicker than anybody else who starts from scratch. So the next question that I want to ask you, property is not a short-term journey. Property is a long-term investment. And a lot of people think property is a get-rich-quick scheme. No, it's not. It is purely a long-term investment. So let's say over the next 10 or 20 years, what is the size of the portfolio you're looking to invest in? Okay, so if I'm going to be part of a 50-day challenge and am well capable of acquiring a property in 50 days, then that would then mean I could potentially at least acquire one property per year, right? Yeah. Two, 
per year, in fact. One maybe every six months. I'd, I'd prefer that, maybe even 10. Maybe even 10, <laughs> you know, factoring the fact that we have 365 days. So if I'm going to learn how to do this in 50 days, then I'm definitely going to use that 50 days aggressively moving forward. Fantastic. So if I was to give it a figure, you're going to get half a million, let's say a million a year. 10 years definitely let's say 10 million fantastic i love that i absolutely love that <laughs> so guys we would like you to follow us on this journey we would like you to use the methodologies that we are going to showcase over these next 50 days and we'd like you as the public to also start investing in property and using these methodologies to become property investors yourselves as we've spoken we can start small which we'd prefer for you to do and then grow your portfolio over 10 to 20 years and you could very easily build a portfolio of 10, 20, even 30 or 50 million rand um, using other people's money if you don't have your own. So, Matt Al, yes. are you ready for this journey? I am so ready, I am so excited and I can't wait to start. Excellent. So guys, let's go on this 50 day journey together. Let's join Matt Al. Let's join the rest of the team and the EDPF Property Academy as we go forth on this 50 day journey. Thank you very much. <laughs>
three bedroom and the other one is an, a two and a half. It's also technically a three bedroom. So because that has worked for me, um, I had said also with the third property, I wasn't looking to go anywhere above half a million yet again. Um, also considering the market and where we come from with the lockdown and everything. Um, so my ballpark is between 400 and 600,000 maximum, but ideally 440. And I have narrowed down my search already within the Pretoria area um, around Arcadia, Sunnyside, North being McCormack again. And I have found a good, yeah, a good, I think a good eight um, two and a half bedrooms, one or two of them have been renovated into um, three, four bedrooms. So already from a rental perspective, they are yeah, cash flow positive. So it's just a matter of now because I'm a creative, you know, um, the cash flow is always up and down. One month is like a lot of money. The next month is like just okay. It, you know, it fluctuates. So it's, it's just how do I find a way to fund this next property? Because when I had purchased the first two, um, my life was a very different setup. I was working in corporate. Um, you know, I wasn't working as an independent contractor as I am now. So it's, it's also just finding the best financial solution for me. Uh, so Matt, out, if, I, if I understood you correctly, the, the value of the two properties uh, roughly then is about 1.2. Your bonds are about 80, yeah. 80, 80, 80, somewhere around there in total. So you've got equity yeah. of just over about 300,000 Rand in those two properties there. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, Adi, your recommendations, where do you think we should go from here? Oh, the other thing, uh, Matt, are, are your properties in your own name or is it in a PTY, a trust? How is it held? So the, the first two are in my own name, but with the third, I want them in my PTY. Moving right. forward. Okay, cool. Adi, up to you. Even uh, trust after. if possible. Okay, cool. Over to thank you, Adi. You, tell, us, tell us what the best options are. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Thanks, Mattel. Nice meeting you. you. Um, super. Okay, so... So how it works is we, we when we do the affordability calculation, we're going to obviously look at your, you're talking about independent contracts, am I correct? Yes. So do you, so you, you sign a contract with a, with a specific uh, company or firm and then they pay you mm -hmm. a, a retainer every month, am I right? Yes, pretty okay, much. Okay, okay. So and that's obviously paid into your bank account. Yes. Okay, and, and this contract, is it, is, it a, is it a yearly contract or is it, or is it a, a, a five-year contract? How does it work? It's a, it's a yearly contract. Okay. And over and above that, there's a lot of gigs that we do as DJs and stuff. So okay. we just invoice for that as well. Okay. So, so what, happens is, what happens is we look at the last six months. So you've okay. got a fixed contract. We will require a fixed contract. And then obviously we're going to look at all the invoices you receive. Um, obviously, you've got the fixed contract income that you're receiving yeah. and then additional invoices, that's fine. Um, we're not going to really need financials. Um, how does your tax work? Do you do a, a, a provisional tax or, or how do, do they the, the, uh, take the tax off those invoices? They take the tax off the invoice already. So. Okay, so that's straightforward. So then we work on the last six months. What we do is we take the highest month and the lowest month and we divide the rest out of four. So sometimes if you've got a, 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 a two months that you had a high income, that'll help your cash flow in terms of how they're going to look at the affordability. In terms of the student accommodation, that rental, is it is it also just monthly that you receive the rental? Yes, it's every month. I've had the one property for three years. Okay. Four years, actually, the other one for three. Do you have 12 months contracts with those with those tenants? Yes, Lisa. Okay, Greenland, wonderful. Yes. So what we do is we're going to need those contracts. And what the what we do is we look at 80% of the lease income. So if if you've got the, the rental, the 12 months rental contracts, um, obviously it's also paid into your bank account. We will then uh, look at the 80% of that rental as a sustainable income, all right? So then what we do is with you buying this third property, we're going to do what they call a TPN report. 
normally what we do is when we submit the application, if there's enough cash flow in your contract income and the lease income, we might not even need the future rental income, but that's a booster. So then we can use 80% of, we can also then use that as a, as a future rental income to boost the affordability. Um, so in terms of you buying in, 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 your, in a PTY, you, uh, is that, that's a new PTY you want to uh, create, am I correct? Yes, specifically okay. for my property. So what happens there is that's a brand new PTY. So, so the affordability will purely be on you as director. I gather that you'll be the only, only director, am I right? Mm -hmm. And you'll be the 100% shareholder? Yes. Okay. So then if you then buy that property, the bank will most likely only look at 80% of the purchase price. So let's say the property is 500,000, we'll most, most likely look at 400,000, but we will apply maximum. I always apply 500% loan application. Um, and then, you know, we can just see what the bank will offer us. Um, so then, then so, so in that case, you must just remember going forward in that PTY, you'll have to then keep financials because you're going to start getting rental income on that PTY. And eventually when your portfolio grows, we're going to look, look at your financials of the PTY and your personal income and expenses. As, as, as being the director of the company. Because remember, we've got the National Credit Act and we've got and inside and outside of the NCA. So depending on, in cases where, where a PTY is self-sustainable self and there's, there, there's good profits and there's good pay, payment ability, then we don't really always have to look at the director for affordability. Then we'll base it on that income of that entity. But in your case, That'll only come way, way after a few years when you when your portfolio starts growing. So if we then have to, we could maybe then gear um, some equity in the existing properties. Um, not ideally, but uh, tell me those properties, where are they bonded? Those two properties. Both at FNB. Well, are they both at FNB? Okay. So we could we could in essence look at your rate and see what. What, what switch we can do. I mean, that, that will only be able to look later on. Um, but tell me, are you renting at the moment as well? Where I stay? Yes, yes. Are you, are you renting there? No. Where you're living? Okay, okay, so the two properties that you, you're getting into a rental on both those properties, am I right? Correct. Okay, so and are you living in one of the properties? No. Okay, so you are you renting somewhere? Are you staying with your parents, or how do you? I just want to determine your your living expenses. Are you paying rental? Oh, you mean where I stay? Yes, In where you stay. Yes, yes. Okay, so you must just remember that rental that you're paying is also obviously part of your expenses and whatever other expenses. But you know, when we do the affordability calculation, we will have that discussion regarding that. So, okay. so, so in this case, yes, if needed, you do qualify for future rental and then we can base the affordability because although you're buying it in a PTY, um, it's still part of your portfolio. So we can still do a future rental on the, on the affordability. But, that, you know, if, if, you, if they do it, let's say for argument's sake, they do a TPN report and they say, okay, the rental is five a month there, credit might say, okay, uh, after after our, our comparable rentals, they might say, okay, you know what? Um, we are prepared to look at three and a half thousand. So that three and a half thousand can be then added to the income for to 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 do to, to work out the affordability on the total transaction. Yeah. Okay, so okay, so uh, I if I'm hearing you correctly, um, and I just for my own edification and hopefully that then for the uh, audience that are listening to us. Um, so you first look at the current rental incomes of the first two properties. Then you will also look at the, uh, the income of the individual or the company that is applying. And then only if it's necessary, do you then go into the, the future rental income option as well, where you take a percentage of the potential future rental income that you gauge from the TPN report. Do I understand that? that? Is that that's the correct. That, that's, that's correct. So... So, so APSA, what we do is, is we, we, when it comes to investors, 
and they and we do affordability and we can see for arguments like the bond installment will be about four a month and we see but you know, we are about a thousand and short on the cash flow. Then we can go piggyback on that future rental and say, okay, we can get three and a half thousand as a, as a sustainable income. That will then boost him to be able to afford that that, that property. So yeah, that right. in most cases, our credit guys, we try and, and work the affordability on. Most likely, the affordability will be on just. Um, just on on the contract income you know um but then it's good to know that there is an option buying that third property yes 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 right phenomenal okay that's great so and i think that gets all the information that we require not just for matt our um being concerned that uh, you know maybe the bank won't approve a bond because she's already got two properties but also for the guys out there watching us that if they are wanting to build their portfolio, that there is this option called the future rental income option. So, Adi, thank you very much for your time. Obviously, yeah. you and Matt are going to talk a little bit more uh, personal and in-depth stuff. We obviously can't talk about the personal stuff online for everybody else to hear. Um, uh, but you guys are going to then discuss uh, the, the personal stuff, the income and expenditure in order to assist Matt Al to then purchase that third property. She will obviously go out there now, make a decision on those eight properties that she does have available. Um, once, she, once she makes a decision, she will make the offer and then she'll bring that offer to you with all the other paperwork that you require. And hopefully we'll be able to help her before the 50 days are over. We are now in the second part of the 50 day challenge. Um, the second half, we heard last week that Jared has now bought his first property. And in fact, he's, he's financing it cash, which is amazing because he's got himself, his wife and some others that have come uh, come together to purchase that first property. Um, and hopefully now in the second half of the 50 day challenge, we can now help Matt L to get her third property in order to start really building her property portfolio. So Adi, thank you very much for your time. Matt L, thank you very much for your time. Guys out there, um, we're hoping that you are following this journey and you are also uh, involved and hoping to try and get your first property within the 50 day challenge. So for now and until tomorrow, goodbye. We'll see you then. The 50 day property challenge kicked off to a fantastic start with Jared purchasing his first property within the first half of the challenge and Matt Al well on the way to purchasing her third property already in building her property portfolio. You the viewers have cast your vote and entered the 50 day property challenge competition in partnership with EDPF Property Academy and Private Property. This entitles you to the full EDPF Academy experience, which includes a 10-inch Huawei tablet, 20 gigabits of data from Telcom every month for 36 months, and full access to the EDPF Property Academy platform. Our winner for this round is Brendan Munsami. Congratulations to you and welcome to the EDPF Property Academy family. Hey!